Presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Our coverage is also brought to you by Ascension St. Thomas, official hospital partner of MTSU. Now, here is your host, the voice of the Lady Raiders, Dick Palmer. Thank you and welcome in. It's a Monday night in Murfreesboro at 6 o'clock, which means it's time for Rick Ansel Live. Coming to you from the Boulevard Bar and Grill, our favorite sports bar and grill in town, right across from campus. Come by any time, and uh, Coach Unsel, we've got another great crowd oh, on hand tonight. Good gracious, full, packed house. That's what I like. So, the R Lady Raiders, uh, we'll take a look at our uh, headlines first, brought to you by the Murfreesboro Post, Rutherford County's local newspaper, with subscriptions just $20 a year for 52 issues. You can go online and take care of that at MurfreesboroPost.com. Uh, headlines concerning uh, number 33, Courtney Whitson, on this past road trip hit her 200th career three-point basket. That was on uh, Thursday night at UTEP, one of six she had in that game, by the way. Just the seventh Lady Raider ever to make at least 200. She now has 206 three-pointers and currently is tied for sixth with Christy Brown. I don't know if you remember Christy oh, yeah. Brown, Coach. Oh, yeah, Riverdale. Downtown Christy yeah. Brown, as uh, they are now tied. Dick, I, I have coached a little basketball I, in the I, state of Tennessee. I know you have. Yeah. Plus, you know your school. Uh, another headline concerning uh, Courtney, she is uh, leading Conference USA in conference games in rebounds per game, almost eight a game. And uh, she's also started 112 straight games. She started every game she's played at Middle Tennessee. And not too many players can say that. No, no. She came in. You know, we, we were very, very fortunate to, to be able to recruit her. She had committed, I think, to East Tennessee State, opened her recruiting back up, and was visiting uh, Missouri. And uh, we were recruiting her. And so uh, we had her in on a visit, and you know, thank goodness we got her. She's a she's a great player, good good young lady, going to do whatever she's got to do for the team. Uh, that's what she's all about. Yeah, and plans to be a coach, I think. Uh, she does. Sometime in the future, and she'll be a good one. Somebody's got to be the next Pat Summit. It could be her. All right, uh, the Raiders are back in town, of course, and host Western Kentucky on Thursday night at six. UAB Saturday at five o'clock. Those are your headlines. Brought to you by the Murfreesboro Post. Now, we, got I would, a, we got a bunch coming Thursday night because I went over and played golf yesterday in Shelbyville and uh, had a great time riding around my granddaughter. And uh, I bet you I had 40 or 50 people tell me, hey, we're coming, we're coming. I got home tonight, Deb said she had already got some requests for some tickets. So, you know, if anybody's got any extra tickets, I'll take them. If you don't want to come watch the Lady Raiders play, I'll take your tickets, somebody else does. I don't think none of these in here is going to give up no Lady Raiders. No, tickets. they're not going to give them up. No, uh, the uh, I, I would be amiss if I forgot to tell you about the question cards, which I did last week. But if you have questions for the coach, fill them out, and Carson uh, Herbert Air will come by and pick them up, bring them up here, and we'll get to those uh, later in the program. So if you have any questions for Coach Ensel, and you take all questions, I will. You? I will. I don't know that I know all the answers, but we'll find somebody that does. Okay. Well, the Raiders uh, had a little uh, less than successful road trip. Is that is that a nice way to say it? But uh, well, ran in. We kind of we kind of stubbed our toe on this. This conference story. is tough. I've said that since I've been in it. There's no game that you can take for granted. I had this happen once down in uh, Florida, if you'll remember. Um, I don't know if we want lost two, but we got went down and got beat by an FIU team that was um, that was not real good, but was very well coached. But uh, you know, you just got to stay on top of your game. And we this week we didn't do that, and we got clipped a couple of times. We scored a couple more baskets during that game. We win both of them. So you know, uh, I came home yesterday. I went and played golf after I took Deb out for breakfast. And the coaches, they went to work. So they probably got there. My coaches are probably mad at me right now, but uh, they'll get over it. Sounds like a good organizational chart to me. Well, it sounds like to me that's what they need to be doing, you know. And I was I was talking with uh, 
Coach Hodges at the airport the other night uh, after the UTSA game coming back. And, uh, of course, Tom's been with us a long time. And I said, Tom, we've been through this before, and we'll, we'll come back. And he agreed that, it, you know, it happens to good teams. I, well, the, Chris made a good point today that through this period, it's kind of the dog days of basketball. You know, you've you got this time, and all teams go through this. We, we're sitting here 18 and, two, 18 and 4 right now. The number two team in the country got beat by Washington yesterday, and Washington's in last place in the Pac-12. So it happens all over the country, you know. It don't happen to us much, but when it does, we're not going to panic. We got Western Kentucky coming in. We got pink night on, on, on Saturday. We got some exciting things that are about to happen. We got some young ladies that, that practice hard and play hard every day. We made mistakes. We didn't put the ball in the hole. We should have been beat. Now we got to get back to the drawing board and, and, and do what we do best, which is play hard. Yeah, and uh, I was saying about Ohio State, they started 19-0. and 0. They, got beat, they, lost. they got beat 40 yesterday. They were number two in the country, They've number lost three in the country. Five of, five of their last six, I think. 91-50 to 50 yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we will uh, get into those games in uh, Texas a little bit more in detail later on. Glad to have everybody here. We're going to take our first break, and we'll be back with more Rick Ensel Live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. For close to a century, doctors and care teams at Ascension St. Thomas Rutherford have been dedicated to delivering compassionate, personalized care to Rutherford County and surrounding communities. We are leading the way with new services and health care options, and we continue to make significant investments in Rutherford County. In 2023, we're opening Tennessee's first neighborhood hospital at Westlawn, and expansions at our Rutherford Hospital campus are underway. Find all the care you need at ascension.org slash St. Thomas Rutherford. With the Kroger app, shopping online with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store. Same low prices, same personalized deals, same rewards on the same high-quality items like Honeycrisp apples and pasta sauce with no hidden fees or markups. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restriction supply, see site for details. Put Lee Company on your team to keep you and your family warm this season. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good no matter how cold it gets. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good to go no matter how cold it gets. And while you're at it, ask them how to get endless hot water by installing an energy-efficient tankless water heater. Schedule your appointment today at LeeCompany.com or give them a call at 615-867-1000. Lee Company, all you need. Hi, this is Coach Nick McDevitt. Ascend Federal Credit Union is the proud sponsor and exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Visit Ascend's branch just off campus at 2316 East Main Street or any of their three other Murfreesboro locations. You can also keep track of your accounts and deposit checks on the go with Ascend's mobile app. For a complete list of services, ATMs, and locations, visit Ascend.org. Ascend is federally insured by the NCUA. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, flying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing, update your information, and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company. For 82 years, Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name in heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 1-888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. The Blue Raiders play here. News Radio WGNS. And welcome back in to Rick Ensel Live from the Boulevard Bar and Grill. We're with you uh, every Monday night at 6 o'clock. And again, we want to tell you about one of our fine sponsors, and that is Lee Company. 
Blue Raider fans get ahead of the game with the best home services team in town for all of your heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, and home improvement needs. Lee Company is the team to call at 867-1000 or online at leecompany.com. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, the, the most, one of the most important parts of our program. Our player guests tonight are Gracie Dodgen and Annabelle Latore Saria. And they will be with us uh, in the second half of the show. Robert uh, Sampson will talk to them. So we'll get to uh, that's too good. That's two good ones. Team, two team players. Yes, no doubt about that. Okay, uh, UTEP on Thursday. First thing I think about when I think about UTEP is it takes about a day and a half to get there. Actually, it took uh, about half a day with one change uh, in uh, airplanes at San Antonio. And in El Paso, the team stays at a hotel adjacent to the airport. So usually we just get out of the, get out of the plane, walk across to the motel. Not this year. We, we got off the plane, we walked right into a bus. The team went right to practice from the, uh, from the airport. Well, part of, part of some of the team strategy, program strategy, not ours, not at Middle Tennessee because we accommodate everybody that comes in here, is to have you practicing at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And that's not what we want to do. We usually practice uh, in the afternoon anywhere from 1 to 4. And it was, sometimes we'll go four to six, and at that point, Eddie will take them to dinner after that. But UTEP came in and was going to put us practicing at six or seven o'clock. And so we were able to die and turn them, and their senior women's administrator got it situated. So they said, well, we got a window from like one o'clock to three o'clock. And so we took that window from one to three. So as soon as we got off the plane, we got on the bus and went over to UTEP and practiced for about an hour and a half. And then checked into the hotel when we, when we got through. We got through, and then we were told at the hotel the water was going to be off the next day <laughs> from like uh, 11 o'clock to 5. No, nothing would work. No bathrooms, no showers, no nothing. But they changed that. I think Eddie and Robert talked to them and uh, convinced them that if there might be a chance that we could come back to UTEP. And we did. Stay we, with them again. We wouldn't be staying there. <laughs> well, the Raiders uh, then had their shoot around, normal shoot around the next morning and, and uh, went to, to play the game. And uh, the game didn't start off too well. We got off to a very slow start. But then somewhere middle of the first quarter, Courtney Winston knocked down well, three, three straight threes. We had, a, we had a, a meeting in the huddle there, pretty – loud meeting in the huddle about, you know, somebody needs to get to work. And Courtney took it at heart, went out and hit six. I think, what, she hit five straight? She hit five straight, hit, hit a total of six in the first half. Right. Yeah. I think it was five straight and then hit another one. But, uh, you know, we needed her to step up and do that. She yeah. did a good job, got us back in the game. You know, we knew it was going to be tough. They had uh, three uh, good posts. The Arike, I think, is one of the best players in our conference. And she ended up, what, 20, 20 points and, what, eight rebounds? She's just hard to defend. And she's been that way since she's been a freshman. Yeah, no doubt about that. And uh, it was 16-16 at the end of the first quarter. And go into the second quarter, and it, it's, it stays tight. And uh, I think we had a halftime lead. They went two, two points. points. I thought Courtney got fouled right there at the end of the half. And, you know, uh, I don't know why they didn't blow it out. She did there's no doubt she got clubbed, yeah. but they didn't blow it. Both teams were, were pressing early, and that was a little bit unusual. Well, you're talking about pressing. Uh, uh, full court, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we, and we pressed quite a bit, uh, and, and we got some turnovers. But then they got to put Narike in the middle, and she's pretty smart, pretty cagey, and they were able to break our press. We've come off of it and went back to it. But, uh, you know, they're, they're a good basketball team. You know, I, I was not impressed with her that much until I saw her play. And she's 6'2", she's just a sophomore, but she is a, she is a very good player. She's a good player, very good player. And around the basket, uh, extremely she just, tough. So, she's just so strong, and she's, got a, she's so um, 
cagey. She she plays in she plays in Europe a lot, so she plays all the time. But uh, she just uh, she just got that ability to get the ball up on the rim. If you do that, you're going to have success. And she's got a pretty good supporting cast too. And uh, of course, at halftime with a two point lead, we go into the third quarter and we had a little drought to start the third quarter. In fact, I don't think we scored until maybe the media timeout halfway through. Well, again, we we just. Uh, we quit executing our offense. We run our offense, but we don't execute it. And that's one of the things we've started working on. And we've talked about it for the last month, but we started really working on it today. And, uh, you know, we've got a very good basketball team. We shoot the ball well. We rebound the ball. We play good defense. You know, we just, we just got to get back where we were. Yeah, got outscored uh, by eight in the third quarter. So we go into the fourth quarter. We're down uh, six points. And... Again, we didn't get a whole lot of production in that fourth quarter. I think, I think Cassinia. We outscored them in the fourth quarter, 17 to 14. Yeah, Cassinia. But, but we got back in the game. We, I thought Cassinia got fouled on a couple of shots right there at the basket with less than, I don't know, 10 seconds to go maybe. Then we got the rebound. Courtney, I think, got the rebound, and we started calling timeout. And you can see it on the TV monitor. They knock it out of her hand. Jalen gets the ball then, and we're still calling timeout. And then they knock it out of her hands, and then they give UTEP the timeout. And we, yeah, there were some strange calls in both of those games. But uh, uh, we came back strong in that fourth quarter. I think uh, Jalen had a big three-pointer late in the game. And with, uh, with just a few seconds left, it was – 62 to 61, their favor. We had two free throws. Uh, Cassinia missed the first one, made the second one to tie. Then they got the ball, and that's when yeah. that's when that three-point shot went in. Well, we we I went to a zone, and you know we don't play zone a lot, but we did. We went to it, and uh, we wanted to make them shoot a contested three, and we did. We did exactly what we wanted to do. The girl was six foot behind the line, and she shot a. a uh, Cab was on her, had the hand on the ball. Everything was done right. And she made it. And, you know, that won the ball game. And they put four-tenths of a second back on the clock, which is not time to do anything. Yeah, they, they were just doing that to hopefully appease us. It didn't appease us, you know. That's just one of those things where they're, you know, that's like calling fouls, you know, to catch them up. You know what I mean? So, I've seen that happen yeah, before. So. I don't get it. I've been in this business 48 years. You recognize that stuff right away. Yeah. So UTEP wins the game by a 65-62 score. Second straight year that uh, we've lost out there, and the last year was one point, I think. It Nick, was. You, you're really expounding on these losses out there. You know? <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting up here about to throw up, and you just I'm, keep – Adding fuel to the fire. You I'm know. just, you know, I'm just looking at the record, but yeah. well, how, you about, know. how about looking at another record? <laughs> well, the Raiders uh, came out of that game and still in pretty good shape uh, as far as the league is concerned. You never like to take that first loss, but uh, you have to take it and live with it and go get it, go get a win. Nothing but you do, you know. Next time out, our our team is is won 18 games. Already, they won 16 in a row, and I'm not going to throw them under the bus. We got a good basketball team, and we're going to come out and play hard against Western Kentucky and get a win. And I hope, I hope all the Western Kentucky fans are listening. They can get your radio broadcast or Facebook, and and I'm going to say it again. We're going to get a win, and I hope all of them are listening, and I hope they come down because that'll help our budget. <laughs> They haven't come down in great numbers lately, Coach, to our place. We, we go up there in pretty good numbers. Last time I was up there, you couldn't get them all in a – you could get them all in a, in a school bus that was there. Yeah. You couldn't get our fans in a school bus. You know, I think that's their only home loss in the conference. Is it? That game that we beat them up there. Yeah. They got a good team. Uh, Greg does a good job. They're well coached. They shoot a lot of threes. Uh, they take care of the basketball. If you look on the stats, the conference, uh, they average exactly what we average. I think it's about 72 points a game. Yeah. 
So they're second, we're first. Um, it's going to be a heck of a game. That's, okay, we'll talk what, a little bit. That's what that's what you do get when you when you're here. You get games like that, and that's that's what we want. Talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the show. But uh, right now we need to take another break, and we will talk about that UTSA game when we come back. So you're listening to Rick Ensel Live, coming to you from the Boulevard Bar and Grill and the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Every week, our Blue Raiders go the extra mile to make sure they're at their very peak. At Sunbelt Bakery, they do the same thing to make sure their granola bars are at their peak. Every week, Sunbelt Bakery brings new batches of granola bars from their bakery to your neighborhood. That's why Sunbelt Bakery's granola bars taste like they just baked them. Because they did. Try a Sunbelt Bakery granola bar today and taste the difference. Sunbelt Bakery. Bakery fresh taste. No preservatives. Hey, basketball fans, this is Coach Ensel, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about litter problems on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million each year just to pick up the litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, our waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter. Remind others not to. And report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you'll never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Steak and Shake, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or Scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus. And try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information. Or visit our office in the Keithley University Center. Room 202. Blue Raider fans, with more local brews than ever before, you are sure to find a local favorite this season in the Blue Raider Beer Garden. Enjoy the thrill of the game at the Blue Raider Beer Garden and try our selection of brews from Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, or Life is Brewing. All available for your tasting pleasure in the Blue Raider Beer Garden above Section D in the Murphy Center. Thank you, Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, and Life is Brewing for your support of MTSU Athletics. Las Casas Drugs is a proud sponsor of Blue Raider Athletics, located at 4702 Las Casas Pike, just minutes from Murfreesboro. Las Casas Drugs strives to provide all of your pharmaceutical needs in that hometown atmosphere you deserve. Family-owned and operated, Las Casas Drugs offers free delivery, immunizations, drive through window, gift shop, merchandise, and medication management programs. Come by and see how we can make a difference. And go Blue Raiders! Hey, Blue Raiders fans, the Mint Gaming Hall Kentucky Downs is a proud partner of your Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. For good times and big wins, the Raiders and the Mint Gaming Hall deliver both. Located close by in Franklin, Kentucky, the Mint Gaming Hall is your spot for great food, cold drinks, and big jackpots. Ready for dinner? The all-new Iron Steakhouse awaits you. Come hungry and be prepared to be impressed. Check out the mintgaming.com for all the details. Get your big hit today. News Radio WGNS, the flagship station for Blue Raider Sports. And welcome back in to Rick Hensel Live on this Monday night from the Boulevard Bar and Grill. We are live and in person here as we are every Monday night. At Tri Green Equipment, they know the value of teamwork. They have the tractor packages and the implements that you need. So get started online at trigreenequipment.com and score a new John Deere tractor package at a comfortable low monthly payment. Tri Green Equipment, a tried and true partner of Middle Tennessee Athletics. Well, following the UTEP game, Coach, we uh, had to catch another flight the next morning. It's, uh, it's a pretty good haul between El Paso it and is. San Antonio. It is. So get on the airplane, head out to uh, San Antonio, and again we go in for uh, for practice that afternoon at the uh, at the arena where, you know, I think the first time we played out there we went to an invitational tournament early early in the season. That's the first game we've lost out there. It uh, is. The the stress of traveling this past weekend was really tough because of all the ice and the and the conditions. Um, just about every flight out of Nashville, I think there was maybe 
the day before, 400 flights out of Nashville canceled, and we got down there that morning, and that board was red, except there was one or two flights going out, and ours was going to San yep. Antonio. So we were very lucky to get out there, and then we were very lucky to get, we had to fly back into Dallas from San Antonio, and we were very lucky to get a flight out of there to come home. Matter of fact, it was delayed, and I was a little bit worried. But, you know, Eddie, Eddie uh, Sanders is responsible for all that. He got us down there. He got us back, and we, they were all safe, and that was important. So, But I was very much concerned about the flights. Yeah, we got home at the wee small hours of the morning on uh Well, on they'd, rather be, they'd rather be home in their bed and stay another night in Dallas. Oh, yes. And so we got back about 1.30, 2 o'clock. But they didn't, we didn't practice Sunday, and they were off. So, you know, I'm 71 years old, so if I can take it, they can take it. They probably were still sleeping when I was headed to the golf course. You going to tell us what you shot? Wasn't good. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Every day on the golf course is a good day. That's, that's what I used to say about fishing when I went fishing a lot. Yeah. A bad day fishing beats a good day at the office. So. Okay. UTSA, and uh, we go in there trying to bounce back from a from a uh, from a loss and have a lead at the end of the first quarter. But it was a strange game. It was to me. It was I, one of the strangest games I've ever tried to call. I thought, I thought San Antonio did a real good job uh, preparing. That was their pink game. I believe I'm correct on that. And their marketing department did a tremendous job. They had people everywhere. I, that was the best crowd that I've seen coming in there. Yep. And the things that they did, uh, all the events they had going on, I thought they really did a great job. And in doing that, bringing in that crowd, it, it, it kind of gave them a home court advantage. Now, we were pretty much in control, but they got a, they got a great player uh, that can play inside, outside. And she's tough. We, we had everybody in that we could put on her at one time or another. But she still did a good job. Now, she didn't get, but I think, what, 18 points? What did she end up Well, she got 20 points and but, 16 rebounds. Well, <laughs> but the, the bottom line was that she, she delegated everything. Uh, the last five minutes of the game, she didn't give it up. No. And she got people shots and got them to the free throw line. That's what a great player does. And that's what she did. And we knew that last five minutes was going to be tough if they got it in her hands, and she just went and got it. Yeah, well, but we still was in the game right to the last. When the game was on the line, she had the ball in her hands and just you, about every possession. You go back and you look at, uh, you know, we shot uh, 54 threes. We hit 10. We had 43 of them that was uncontested. This is the best three-point shooting team that I've ever coached. You know, I wouldn't have thought that would have ever happened, to be honest with you. But it did. It did happen, and we lost the game. They opened in a, I think, a 1-3-1 zone. Yeah, they played a lot of stuff. They played a triangle in two, played a 1-3-1, played some 2-3. They mixed it up. Uh, Karen Ashton was a, it was a head coach at one time at uh, Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. Also at North Texas, also at uh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So she's been around a long time. She did a very good job. And her players responded to what she wanted. And uh, they got a big victory, big win. Now, they've been in a lot of games. If you look at their, the games they've been in, there's only one game that's got out of hand. That was our game with them here. Yep. We beat them 39 points. But now, the rest of their games, they've either won or lost by three, four, five points. Yeah, and uh, I said it was a strange game. I kind of felt like I was calling an NBA game for a while with all the threes going up. Oh, God. But, you know. One of those times, you know, went in there, rattle, 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 out, rattle, 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 out. And, you know, coaches over there saying, shoot, shoot, shoot. And the player's mind saying, nope, I'm going to pass it here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. No, I'm going to pass it here. Shot clock goes down, we put it up. Uh, you just got to play free. You got to shoot it. The only way you're going to hit the next shot is you got to take it. When you shoot late in the shot clock, that puts a little bit more pressure on the shooter, doesn't it? Well, it shouldn't. You're playing a game. You've got good skill sets. Every player we got's got good skill sets. Just rely on your skill set. Step into the shot, flow, you know, all mental. We watch these girls. Uh, I go to practice 
not every day, but a lot. Watch them shoot out there, and I mean, it's just swish, well, swish, swish. Just, it's, you know, uh, free throw shooting, shooting is something you just don't talk. You don't make a big deal out of it. You get in there and you, and you repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, a lot of coaches, they, you know, they make a big deal out of lights. They make a big deal out of not going on a practice floor. You know, free throw shooting. My thing is you don't say anything to a free throw shooter, you know. A good shooter's got good skill sets are going to come back to that, good fundamentals, and it's going to take over. If you're in a little bit of a slump, you'll come out of it just as fast as you went in it. You know, and in and, and baseball, all players go through some part of the season in a slump. And, the, you know, if you're in a slump, you think you're never going to get another hit, you're never going to make another basket, then all, you, all it takes is hitting one or two I'll tell you, and get I you mean, right I'm back not, on track. I'm not – one bit concerned about the shooting. I, mean, I am concerned about some of our decision making at, at San Antonio. I thought we made some bad decisions. Now that is something we can really control. Yep. You know, how we pass the ball, how we deliver the ball, executing our offense, things like that, getting into our offense a little quicker. Uh, that's stuff that we can control. But now, you know, the, I, I, I've, I've complained to my coaches in particular, Kim, Matt, Tom, Nina, after the game, but I didn't complain a lot about the shooting. Even though we shot 54 times and didn't hit but 10, I know that'll come back. We could very well shoot 54 times against Western and hit 35 of them. That's, you know, like out there today, we were, uh, we were filling it up, you know. I did have one thought today. I wonder where that was Saturday, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't say anything. I had the thought. <laughs> It's hard, it's hard to keep that inside sometimes. <laughs> well, it is for me. <laughs> well, I know. All right, we're going to take a break, and we've got a treat coming up for you. Uh, Robert Sampson is here. So he's going to talk to Gracie Dodgen on our next segment and then uh, Annabelle Saria on uh, the following segment. So stay with us for that. You're listening to Rick Ensel Live from the Boulevard on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hi, we're RJ Young. We offer technology solutions that power your business, school, hospital, church, law firm, and more. RJ Young will empower your office to be the modern office. That means an office that integrates technology as a business advantage, all to help you work smarter. From managed IT services, office equipment, and technology, business process outsourcing, and digital communications, we're proud to be your one stop for technology solutions that power your business. Come visit us at rjyoung.com. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. Hey, Blue Raider fans. This is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! Needing a snow day? How about a dough day? Instant games from the Tennessee Lottery are bringing winning flurries and drips of cold hard cash. With chances at breathtaking top prizes up to $4 million, sled to your nearest Tennessee Lottery retailer and score a chance at a dough day. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game changing fun. Please play responsibly. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Winning requires the right game plan. 
like the impressive towing and payload you'll only find in the 2023 Ford F-150 truck. No wonder Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. The 2023 Ford F-150. Greatness starts here. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. You are listening to NTSU Sports on WGNS. And welcome back to Rick Insel live from the boulevard right off the edge of campus here at Milton Tizzi State University, the heart of Murfreesboro, as we welcome you back for another segment. And this time, Gracie Dodge is going to join us here in, at the restaurant tonight to talk a little bit about her high school career, her time here at MTSU so far. Gracie, a 5'10 sophomore guard from not too far away, Sparta, Tennessee, in White County High School. Folks here in the restaurant, please welcome in Gracie Dodgen. Gracie played in 17 games during her true freshman season last year, and uh, it's been a, a rough season with a preseason injury before the first exhibition game. But give us an update on how things are going uh, with your injury head to your knee area. Yeah, so right now everything is... Uh, going really good. Last week I just got out of my brace, so uh, baby steps, that's all I can say. It's just, it's getting better every day, and um, I just have great people around me. I have great coaches around me, great teammates around me. Uh, my trainer, Chandler, she does a great job with everything, so when you have uh, good people around you, it makes things better when things aren't going good, so just getting better every day. We talked a little bit earlier today about uh, your thoughts on potentially being a coach down the road and sometimes these injuries kind of put that in perspective a little bit and you get to see a different side of things what do you think you've learned the most being on the sidelines this year about the game about different nuances that you see in that role yeah so being out and being on the side I'm, I'm really getting to see the game and everything from a different perspective so even though I'm not out there physically getting better I'm mentally getting better and just learning and taking things just in every way that I can you know and so I would love to go back and help my dad coach at my high school. I just think that would be really cool. So I'm really just taking things in right now and learning everything I can. So You talked about your dad there. Do you have a different appreciation for him now, uh, <laughs> what he's doing and what Coach Enzel's doing and all, all, all the staff? Yeah, I, I appreciate all my coaches that I've ever had, but especially here it's just – I can't even imagine what all they go through. And, but they always, they're always there for you whenever you need them. Always have a smile on their face. And, you know, that's what you need as a college athlete. You just need coaches that support you with whatever you have going on. And that's what we have here. And I'm just very thankful for them. So, yeah. You're about 90 minutes away from home. And you made a commitment very early to come here. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what went into that decision. And at the end of the day, why was it MTSU? Yeah, so when I was younger, I would always come to the games, and um, my dad used to coach Abby Sism, so she used to play here, and we would come and watch her play, and I just always, always, always wanted to be a Lady Raider. I would watch them run up um, from the tunnel, and I would hear the fight song play, and I was just like, I want to be on that court under the lights at Murphy Center. So when I uh, got the chance to come and play here, I just knew this is where I wanted to be. I didn't even want to go anywhere else. I didn't want to visit anywhere else. I wanted to be here, so... Um, it's just I'm truly blessed to be able to play here, you know. So. There's a lot of familiarity with playing in Murphy Center for you, with being around from this area, but you also have somebody on this team that you've played with for a long time. Tell us about the friendship you have with one of your teammates. Yeah, so me and Jalen, we played um, AAU basketball together since we were in the fifth grade. And just from that very first practice, I was like, this girl's going to be one of my best friends. So. Uh, we were just really close growing up, and we always had the dream of, oh, what if we could play college basketball together? So um, that's happening right now, and there's no better feeling than making these lifelong memories, being on the platform we're on and having your best friend by your side. So and doing things we always talked about doing, and now we're doing them. So I'm just very thankful for our friendship, and now she's my teammate, and we're making all these great memories. So, yeah. Gracie graduated in the top 10% of her class in high school. And tell us a little about what you're majoring in here at MTSU. So I just changed my major to physical education. So I'm right now doing that, and I'm really enjoying it. I have Coach Hodge's wife as one of my teachers, and she really helps me a lot, and she's very passionate about that. So it's making it very enjoyable. 
the White County High School star, uh, made her collegiate debut back against East Carolina in November of 2021, hit a three in that game. It was a four-year letter winner for her father at White County High School, where she's the all-time leading scorer, 2,068 points, and set the Tennessee single-game record for three-pointers with 15 threes against Kingston High back in December of 2020. When you look back at your high school career, a couple moments that maybe stick out and favorite times through those days. Um, probably my junior year when we won the um, district tournament. Nobody thought that we could do it because Stone Memorial was really good. So everybody was doubting us. And I just remember me and my dad at the beginning of the season was talking about, you know, we had things that we wanted to accomplish, not individual goals or not goals for him, but goals for our team. And so uh, we said we want to win a dis district title. We want to win a region title. We want to do this. So when we won that district title, it just felt, you know, it was right. It was the right thing. And I'm just glad that I got to experience that with him and um, do it for our town and do it for my school so let's hit the fast forward button a little bit now that you've spent about a year and a half during your collegiate year what collegiate career here what sticks out to you special moments uh, at that, this level um, the WNIT tournament last year I think um, we really took that and we ran with it and that was some of the best games that we've had and the best moments and experiences and then um, I also think uh, the Louisville game this year. The atmosphere was just insane. And, you know, we came out and we got the win. And um, that's memories you'll never forget, you know. So that, that was probably one of the big things. And just, you know, traveling with your best friends and your coaches, you know. Our fan base is great here. So they're always there at the game supporting us. So just the memories you'll never – that's one thing I hold really close to me, the memories you make. Gracie, we appreciate you joining us tonight, and best wishes as rehab continues. We know you'll be back on the court ready to go very soon yes. and preparing for next season. Yes. Uh, and when we return on Rick Insel Live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, basketball fans, this is Coach Insel, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about litter problems on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million each year just to pick up the litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, our waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter. Remind others not to. And report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com. Hey, Blue Raider fans, Chip Walters here. Lightning's Locker Room, powered by Textbook Brokers, is the place to get your Blue Raider gear. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 6 and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Lightning's Locker Room is just across the street from Floyd Stadium at 1321 Greenland Drive. It has all the MT polos, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, and all the other game day gear you'll ever need. See the selection online at mtsugear.com or at Gate 2A on game days. Lightning's Locker Room, the official game day provider, powered by Textbook Brokers. You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of P-I-Z-Z-A? <laughs> Obviously. But as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh, yeah. That's the sound of a freshly opened fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese, and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Dazzling diamonds, royal rubies, elegant emeralds, and stunning sapphires. Now's the time to discover an exquisite variety of radiant prize-winning jewels that are set to take your breath away. This gorgeous one-of-a-kind display won't be found at the finest jewelry stores, but rather at your nearest Tennessee Lottery retailer with Jumbo Bucks Jewels Instant Games. Collect glistening top prizes of up to $300,000 and make every win sparkle. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. 
Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Blue Raiders play here. WGNS, Murfreesboro, Smyrna. And back for another segment on Rick Insel Live, coming to you from the boulevard at the edge of the campus of Middle Tennessee State University here in the heart of Murfreesboro. Another one of our student athletes has joined us for this segment. And a really special young lady who I think throughout this segment you're going to learn is so key to what goes on on a daily basis with this program. Uh, Annabelle and Annabelle, I want you to properly pronounce your name so everyone here under can hear it with uh, your native accent. Mm -hmm. So, my name is Annabelle La Torre Siria. That's how we say it in Spanish. Good deal. Annabelle comes to us from uh, Spain, a 6'3 junior forward who uh, excelled in the prep game at John Majeski Academy. And what we were hinting at a second ago is. A lot of times at this level, you bring in male practice players, and Annabelle is a key part of that practice squad, if you will. Mm -hmm. There is one big MTSU Lady Raider family, but you really have two sets of teammates, if you will. The girls on the team and the guys that are part of this practice squad that you are working so hard to make sure everybody gets a look. Tell me a little bit about what it means to you to make such an impact on the court, yet this season you played about five to ten minutes in actual games? Um, so I think not even in practice, just on a daily basis, I try to put everyone together because I feel I come from a culture where everyone talks to each other, we are close to each other, and I feel it's something that is actually missing in America from my point of view. So I try to put everyone together and, you know, we have all a good time and we try to be nice to each other, be honest, you know, and if something is not working, try to communicate it. Um, when you are on that bench and rooting this team on, you know, the energy you bring is, is contagious. There's no question of that. And then we hear you communicating all the time on that bench. Uh, what's been the biggest adjustment for you here uh, since you came to the States for the first time in uh, adapting to college culture here? Um, first of all, I will say the time because it's spending seven hours ahead. So I had jet lag for about like a week or two. Um, then it's the food and then it's the culture in general. Like I need someone to give me a ride to go to the supermarket as I don't drive or I don't have a car. Um, but I really like how many opportunities they give us, either money, either clothing, either education. It's something that is missing in Spain. And as you were talking in the bench, as coaches say, do something for your team. If I don't have the chance to get to play, I try to make the best of it and try to you know, con be contagious and make the other people that might be feeling bad for being on the bench, you have the opportunity to be on the bench. There's thousands of girls that will do anything to be on that bench with you. One thing about Annabelle, um, she always has, I think, the best food orders. And you talked about food a second ago. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing that you've picked up uh, in your repertoire here in America? Sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries. Yeah, I think you had a few of those back there earlier tonight. Yeah. Uh, two siblings. Tell us about your family a little bit back in Spain. Um, so my brother, he's 6'8", and he's currently playing in Spain. He's playing basketball, and then my sister, she's 13. And she's trying to play basketball like me and my brother, but she does it more for fun. Because since I saw my potential when I was younger, I was always trying to push harder and see how far I could come. And I ended up in a different country overseas. Um, how did you end up at MTSU? What, what was that process like for you? It was hard. It was COVID year. Um, I was studying in London, and the grades worked differently. So I had to wait a couple months for my grades to come back. So I was just looking for somewhere where they would want me, you know? And I ended up here, and I don't regret it. I've learned a lot. I've met wonderful people and I'm getting the education that I really wanted. 
What um, is your major right now? And maybe tell us a little bit about one of your favorite classes that you've taken so far. So my major is kind of hard to say. It's mechanical engineering technology. It's basically design, designing stuff. Like I could go from designing a computer to a table to a whole room. And it's design. That's my favorite class. I love designing. What has been your favorite moment as a Lady Raider so far? Um, winning the conference in 2021, it was a once in life experience. It was my first year here, I didn't know what we were doing, but when they explained it to me, like, I just got tears of joy because it doesn't happen to everyone. There's people playing four, five, six years in college basketball and they never get a ring. I got one my first year here. Hope everybody appreciates how special and lucky we are to have this young lady with us all the way from Spain. Annabelle, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Thank you. And in just a few moments, we'll return on Rick Insel Live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Murfreesboro Medical Clinic is proud to be the official medical group of MTSU Athletics. We all win big when we work as a team for better health. Just like MTSU's athletes and coaches, our healthcare professionals work tirelessly to make our community proud. At MMC, we really are true blue. MTSU is our hometown team, and your health is our mission. Visit mmclinic.com or call us at 615-893-4480. It's never lost on Wendell World that your home is your largest physical investment. Wendell World's integrity can be noticed from your very first moment of contact. The clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Wendell World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and a proud partner of Middle Tennessee State University Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the detail. Middle Tennessee Electric proudly supports the Blue Raiders, and we're proud to power the scoreboard lights at Murphy Center. When it comes to the electric service in the community, you can always trust MTE to do what's best for our members. We serve by providing affordable, reliable, safe electricity and outstanding member services. Here at MTE, we serve to make life better for our members and their communities. Visit MTE.com to learn more. And about that scoreboard, well, light it up, Blue Raiders. At Kroger, you can find the highest quality products at a great price in every aisle, every day with Kroger brand. So you can stock up on your household favorites that are tried, tested, and loved by you. Because when you get the products you love at great prices, it feels like winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Simply the best. The flagship station for Blue Raider Sports, WGNS. Welcome back in for the final time to Rick Ensel Live, coming to you from the Boulevard Bar and Grill here in Murfreesboro. And I don't know how much of the interviews you got to hear, Coach, but those two young ladies are certainly, uh, they are certainly some of the the most personable oh, yeah. kids yeah. that that, yeah. uh, that we have and great teammates. You know, you got to find uh, Grace has got hurt and then uh, Annabelle is, is on the bench and, you know, you got to find a way to be a positive to your basketball team. And both of them have found a way. Grace is one of the biggest cheerleaders we got. And then Annabelle is, works both ways. She's in on the practice team. She, you know, she's so smart that she can pick that up and she can run what the other team's going to run. She does a good job defending, and so, you know, you got to find a way to make your team better. Somewhere along, if it's in the dressing room, the practice floor, on the bus ride, plane rides, whatever. One of our fine sponsors, Bud Light. They are a proud sponsor of MTSU Athletics. Go Blue Raiders. And, Coach, we have a few questions. Last call. Anybody got any more questions? Better get them up here. In the Duke FSU game, a men's ball was used in the first half. How do we prevent that from happening in our uh, – that's probably what was wrong with us Saturday. I hadn't thought about that. Coaches, we was using the men's ball. Yeah, we wouldn't play with the women's ball. Now, you there know, is – some people don't know, but there is a difference. There is a difference. It's a little smaller, the women's ball is. But, uh, you know, the girls know. 
our girls can pick up a ball and they know right away if it's a men's ball or women's ball. You know, and they use, that's happened in some of our shoot arounds with other places. And our, they went and, and gave those balls to Matt or Nina or Kim one and they threw it out, you know. But, uh, you know, girls know. I can't believe that that happened a half of a game. Um, you know, Duke got beat. And I guess you can use that as I play. We play with the men's ball the first half. So, well, the officials have to they have to handle the basketball before the game. Well, uh, you got the best official in the in NCAA and one of the top five officials of the WNBA sitting back there. Right. He's been calling probably 25, 30 years. I bet he he knows right away when he picks the ball up. You know, he's called men's games before. Uh, which do you like better, practicing or playing? This one comes from Isabel Hodges. I like practice better, Isabel. I'll just be honest with you. I like playing and watching them carry on what you teach them in practice, but I love practice. That's my classroom, and I, I, I love it. I can't wait every day to get there. Why aren't number two and number five getting to play at the same time? Well, I hadn't, who is number two? Is that? That's Anastasia. Yeah. I, they do play sometimes at the same time. Most of the time we're playing Courtney 40 minutes. We rotate them in and out. They both play the four and the five. And those three are taking most of the reps. Now, Jada Granham from Canada now is getting better, so she's probably going to take some of those reps. But Courtney being on the floor is kind of like my team captain. She keeps everybody where they need to be. She plays good defense. She's the leading rebounder in our conference. And, uh, you know, if a shot goes up and she don't get it, it's not because she's not trying. So you earn your time in, in practice, and in practice she goes as hard at it as she does in the game. Okay. Uh, appreciate those questions uh, from you all, and we will uh, talk just a little bit about West. We haven't got much time left, Coach, but they were down 19 going into the fourth quarter at UTEP the other night. They were. And, and uh, won by two. Yeah, they've done, they, they're doing a good job. They're sharing the ball. They shoot the ball well. I think Greg is a really good coach. And, um, you know, he's done a good job with his team. And he's got them right now. They're in second place, one game behind us. It's going to be an exciting game. When you put good players, and he's got good players, and you put a good coach in together, and he's a good coach, you're going you're gonna, to he – he got – early in the season, he took some losses with some teams he probably would, could beat the heck out of now. But he knew what he was doing, how he wanted to bring his team along. And he got over that, and now he's right in the thick of things in the conference. Right. And in addition to this being a natural rivalry, there's also a lot riding on it as far as the conference goes. The uh, ball game's for Thursday be, night. For it to be a rivalry, you got to win some, don't you? Somebody told me that. Yeah. I think it was you about a week uh, ago. Yeah. <laughs> They're not a rivalry with me. There's 100 miles of hate, you know, but, uh, yeah. They're not a rivalry. We'll tip it off at 6 o'clock Thursday night. I How know many most times have we beat them, Dick? 20 times, and they beat us since I've been here? Five, five or six. Five or six times. Yeah, something there. like that. We'll keep that string going, too, that, on Thursday that, night. Yeah, that's before I knew, you know, anything about Western. <laughs> okay, we're going to wrap it up with that. Yes. <laughs> Rick Ensel Live will be back next uh, Monday at 6 o'clock. Chip Walter standing by with Coach Nick McDevitt, so stay Thank with us for that. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank everyone for coming out. You're listening to Rick Ensel live on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. This has been Rick Incel Live, presented by Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Our coverage is also brought to you by Dissension St. Thomas, official hospital partner of MTSU. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation of the Blue Raider Network. Don't miss a moment of the excitement of Middle Tennessee men's and women's basketball. You'll want to be part of the Murphy Center Madness. Single game tickets are on sale now by going to GoBlueRaiders.com slash tickets. Watch every second of Blue Raider men's and women's basketball in the glass house. Head to GoBlueRaiders.com slash tickets. Middle Tennessee, our town, our team.
The flagship station for Blue Raider Sports. News Radio WGNS, Murfreesboro, Smyrna. The Blue Raiders play here. On the Blue Raider Network, from Learfield, welcome to Nick McDevitt Live. Blue Raider basketball is presented by Bud Light. It's for the fans. Ascend Federal Credit Union, the exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. And by Ascension St. Thomas, official hospital partner of MTSU. Now, here is your host, the voice of the Blue Raiders, Chip Walters. Welcome in. It's Monday night, and we are here at the Boulevard. Glad to have you with us right across from campus, corner of Middle Tennessee and East Main Street, our favorite sports bar and grill in Murfreesboro, so be sure and stop by anytime. And right now would be a good time, so come on out on this Monday night. Uh, another big crowd uh, for our coaches' shows. We're down to, the, to three left, I think, after tonight, and uh, started this year back in, in uh, November. And or in December, and uh, here we are. It's getting uh, late, and uh, it's uh, we, getting late. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Later in the year, we were uh, sitting uh, right before practice today, talking to, with the guys about you know kind of the upcoming schedule, and they were asking when somebody you know when we played somebody else, and I said, yeah, we've only got three home games left. There's three home games and four away, and they all just kind of it, it, you could see it dawned on them like holy moly, this it is really winding down. Yeah, uh, you know when they're coming fast and furious at, at you, you don't always have time to sit back and, and think about that stuff. But uh, again, only seven left, three at home, four on the road, and uh, starting this week, that's uh, right. To get these on the road. Yeah, and after this week, you get three at home and two on the road, and plus the conference tournament. So it does, it, it really does come fast. And uh, the Blue Raiders had a nice uh, bounce back weekend this past week at home with uh, two wins over uh, two very different ball clubs. And, uh, and, and, and again, uh, and I sound like a broken record, but when you can play and win different styles of games, that it, it says something about your ball club. Yeah, uh, you know, we scored 84 points in both games. And uh, in one game, we play a team that uh, really pressures the basketball, heats up the ball on the ball, and is uh, denying one pass away to make it uh, hard for you to run offense. And then two nights later, you're playing a team that likes to sit in a 2-3 zone for the majority of the game. And so uh, you're going to face two very different teams in a short amount of time. And uh, it is good uh, to, to be able to win two different styles in a short turnaround because that's m maybe what we see here in uh, three or four weeks when the conference tournament rolls around is play one way on Thursday, another way on Friday, another way on Saturday. And uh, you've got to be able to win uh, different ways, uh, perhaps shoot it poorly one night and still find a way to win. So you're going to have to rely on your defense that night, uh, get played a ton of zone one night and you've got to be able to make outside shots uh the next night you better be able to handle some pressure because you're playing somebody like FIU or UTEP who's going to really get after you and try to make the game very disruptive and chaotic and uh you've, you've got to be able to have personnel that allows you to play against different styles of opponents and and still win UTEP came in here just having come off a 52-42 game and 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 here you you know, and, and you know, if I think if you just said, okay, there's going to be 156 points scored, uh, then I would, I, a, a dollar to a donut hole, I would have taken the donut hole. Yeah, you. If somebody said a uh, 130, you'd have definitely, uh, you know, I guess that's taken the under. Uh, there, there wouldn't have been a, a ton uh, of people thinking that there were going to be that many points put up on the board, uh, given the way they normally do play. They are. They are a disruptive defensive team. Uh, Joe's teams have always been that way. Uh, it's two teams at UTEP have been good defensive teams, and uh, his teams at Abilene Christian before he came to UTEP uh, were known for how physical and tough they were defensively. And so to be able to score 84 points uh, the other night, I just thought it was uh, kind of a testament to how we were sharing the basketball. I think, if I remember correctly, we had five guys in double figures yep. uh, that night. And, 
you know, anytime you can do that, you're, you're sharing it and got multiple guys that are playing well. The other thing you did this weekend uh, prior to the UTEP game is, uh, or for the UTEP game, you made a change in your starting lineup. And uh, you don't, players uh, don't take that lightly. You don't take that lightly when you make a decision. And you're not one who typically will mix things up a whole lot once you get a group that's going. Yeah, I try not to, to do that. Uh, maybe I should think about doing it a little more often, to be honest with you, than I do. Uh, but I, I just think a lot of players and a lot of teams operate better uh, when they're in a rhythm and a routine. And I think all athletes like routine. And uh, you know, at the same time, though, you want to be able to reward good play in games, but also reward the guys that are putting in the work during the week, that are practicing hard, practicing well, uh, putting in the extra outside of what is uh, required of them. And, uh, you know, that, that I think is a driving factor. Guys want to play more and some want to start. And, uh, you know, I think some of that was presented to us with uh, Tiafiel Leonard's uh, ankle injury during right. the FIU game. Uh, but we, we felt like a, a change uh, was needed, warranted, a little spark. And uh, the guys that have been moved into uh, that role have uh, responded well. And the guys that uh, have been moved out of that role, so to say, have responded well uh, as well. So that, that, that's been good for our team over the weekend. Well, you know, they announced the, the starting lineup, but a lot of times they don't announce who finished. But uh, that group, a lot of times when you look out there, who finished – who and that's who you, who do you trust and those those are the guys yeah and it's also sometimes it, it just helps your substitution pattern yeah you know it's not that this guy isn't one of your top five players or maybe your, your third or fourth best player your second yeah. best player it's just who else is he out there with and that's something that we look at as well as lineup analysis who which grouping of players are playing well together and the last thing you want to do is to be putting in a – have one guy in the starting lineup and another guy coming off the bench that, that you know, he's the first sub out of the game, uh, this player is, and the guy that he plays well with is the guy that's coming into the ball game. And now yeah. you, you just find yourself towards the end of the game that a grouping of players, whether it's three or four or five, don't spend that much time on the court together. And you can get off to the wrong footing – uh, before the ball goes in the air based on who you start. And it was like, what, FAU, uh, three of their top four scores come off the bench. Correct. So, and, again, that's where a head coach and a coaching staff and the team learn, okay, who does play well together, who reacts better as a starter as opposed to coming in and being that Vinny Johnson, being the microwave coming off the bench. Yeah, and, and – you know, some coaching staffs or coaches have the philosophy, you know, I want to start the game with my best defensive group. You know, let's not let the other team get off to a hot, quick start. Uh, others uh, go the other way. You know, I, let's, let's make sure that we've got an offensive group because, you know, I don't want to come to the first uh, media timeout with two points on the board. Let's make sure that uh, we get ourselves going. So uh, different coaches, I think, di have different uh, philosophies as to which grouping to start. Uh, not necessarily uh, just off a substitution pattern or putting the top five players out there. And I, and I think you could even take that a step further and uh, you talk about the, the type of team you want on the floor. I think your opponent and their style of play has a lot to do with that also. That can dictate it as well. But, again, because of playing so many different styles, the point we are making a minute ago, yeah. the difference between UTEP and UTSA. Correct. Correct. Uh, you, you don't want to be switching up your lineup every other game because right. of who you're playing and what their style is. Uh, I just think that uh, that's hard as an athlete uh, to, to not know whether you're starting the game or when right. you're coming in, what's expected of you on a particular night. Now, for the thing is with the, the changes you did make, it's not like Tyler Millen is not familiar with a starting with either role. starting or, or playing a lot, right? Yeah, you know, and and same with uh, Justin Porter. Uh, you know, not not like he's uh, not been playing for us, and all of a sudden he's asked to to start and play thirty two minutes. Uh, it, it it just I think helped our team and our substitution pattern a little bit. Um, got us off to a, a little better start over the last couple of games, and you know uh, it worked well. And the other thing, Cam has been fresher at the end of games 
the last the last two games, and, and he was at his best in the second half of both of those games. Yeah, and particularly uh, towards the end. You right. know, it, it's, it's just hard when uh, it, both games he played about 23, 25 minutes. And, and you think about the first three. If he played those same minutes, but also you tack on the first three of both halves, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden his, his minutes go way up if you're going to ask him to start and finish mm-hmm. both halves. And uh, you, you want to have fresh legs at the end to be able to make those tough shots, to be able to break open if you're ahead but the other team's pressing. Uh, that's different to, to have some pop in your legs because you're not tired versus having guys that – uh, their, their legs feel like rubber because they haven't come out very much. And so continuing to, to look at those kind of things, but also to continue to develop depth. Uh, I think uh, Porter's development and uh, Jared Coleman-Jones' development well, over the last month has really not only benefited our team, uh, but has really benefited Dishman and Weston at their respective positions so that they're, they're not gassed at the end of the game. And and Jared has, has really given our team another another dimension over the last month to six weeks. I'll scratch that question off then. That was my <laughs> next one about Jared because not only is he producing, but it allows for a fresher DeAndre Dishman uh, late in ball games, and, and that shows as well. It does. We said this the other mm-hmm. night after the, the game that you, some people don't remember that Jared hasn't played a ton of basketball the last two years coming into this season. Dish took two years off because of a sit-out and an injury, and it took him almost that full season before last year with about a month to go. You could see he started getting his game legs back under him, and he kind of took off. Now he's, uh, now he's in the best shape of his career. He's doing well. Yeah. And then you kind of see that now with Jared. He sat out last year with a knee injury, and the year before was the COVID year, and his was as disruptive as anybody's. Our team clearly was. But he went through periods where he had a concussion during that season. He had COVID during that season. We missed games because other players had COVID and the other team had COVID. So it was a goofy year. So he goes for about two seasons and played 10 games, 10 or 12 games. And now just being in a week by week, he's practicing his play and he's practicing his play and he's lifting weights. And and now you start to see uh, what just a a regular routine-like season looks for him. (laughs) And and, uh, it's been good. Yep, absolutely. Our show tonight yeah, so brought to you in part by, by, Murfers, by the Murfreesboro Post. Rutherford County's local newspaper subscriptions to the Post are just $20 a year for 52 issues. Visit online at MurfreesboroPost.com today. We'll take a time out. More with Coach Nick McDevitt after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. When you open a crisp, cold Bud Light, you know game day is here. You owe me five bucks. We mean every sound. Enjoy responsibly. 2022 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Introducing new Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda Variety Pack. You hear that? It's seltzer with the pop of soda, all with zero sugar. Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, the loudest flavors ever. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Seltzer Hard Soda, IRC Beers, St. Louis, Missouri. For close to a century, doctors and care teams at Ascension St. Thomas Rutherford have been dedicated to delivering compassionate, personalized care to Rutherford County and surrounding communities. We are leading the way with new services and health care options, and we continue to make significant investments in Rutherford County. In 2023, we're opening Tennessee's first neighborhood hospital at Westlawn, and expansions at our Rutherford Hospital campus are underway. Find all the care you need at ascension.org slash St. Thomas Rutherford. Needing a snow day? How about a dough day? Instant games from the Tennessee Lottery are bringing winning flurries and drifts of cold, hard cash. With chances at breathtaking top prizes up to $4 million, sled to your nearest Tennessee Lottery retailer and score a chance at a dough day. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Please play responsibly. With the Kroger app, shopping online with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store. Same low prices, same personalized deals, same rewards on the same high-quality items like Honeycrisp apples and pasta sauce with no hidden fees or markups. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restrictions apply. See site for details. 
Put Lee Company on your team to keep you and your family warm this season. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good no matter how cold it gets. Their expert technicians can perform a 22-point inspection and tune-up to ensure your HVAC system is good to go no matter how cold it gets. And while you're at it, ask them how to get endless hot water by installing an energy-efficient tankless water heater. Schedule your appointment today at LeeCompany.com or give them a call at 615-867-1000. Lee Company, all you need. The MTSU Alumni Association is proud of its more than 130,000 living alumni who are leading, teaching, entertaining, researching, buying, farming, nursing, and more worldwide. Every Blue Raider accomplishment adds value to your degree. Are you connected to the MTSU National Alumni Association? Visit mtalumni.com to share what you're doing, update your information, and see how you can be involved and informed. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Blue Raiders on News Radio WGNS. Welcome back into Nick McDevitt Live. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Our show brought to you in part by Bud Light, proud sponsor of Blue Raider Athletics. Coach Nick McDevitt here tonight, along with uh, his sidekicks of Cooper and Katie. Glad to have them here with us tonight. Let's take a few minutes to talk about the the uh, UTEP game last Thursday. And when you look at the makeup of UTEP's roster way different than a year ago, not only in what they've added, but also if you remember Sule Boom, who was a terrific player, he is, uh, he's not there, but he is still making noise. He's still making noise. Uh, Keontae Kennedy uh, is still making noise as well, but uh, Joe still has a really good team. You know, they, they play hard, and uh, Jacob Germany is a, a low down inside at 6'11", and, and being a lefty, uh, you know, I guess that's UTSA, sorry. Right. <laughs> but uh, with, with – uh, uh, with, with he He's a big fella. Uh, you know, they, they just – they're disruptive. Kind of like what we were talking about in last week's show with FIU. Uh, they, they're just not going to let you come down and be comfortable offensively. Uh, the FIU is a full court press. They're going to run you out of stuff. Uh, UTEP, similar concept. They're not going to let you just throw it to Dishman at the top of the key or Jared Jones and, and kind of run your set and what you want to do. You better be good at your counters, uh, uh, particularly against both. It, those two teams are probably uh, the two maybe at times with La Tech that will really try to disrupt you. And you, you better have counters to a lot of your sets. And, um, you know, they, they do a nice job of running you out of stuff. He's, he's a, more of a defensive-minded coach. And, um, you know, I, th- I thought we did a good job of handling that, that, uh, that, that defensive style. Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of denying going on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, All they're, over the floor. The, it is. And so <clears throat> everybody that catches it, because of the way they play, the, no matter who's got the ball, they're going to get pressure. And uh, they, they're just waiting on the guy to get it that, that will turn it over. And uh, that, that's, uh, that's the name of the game for them. Or what ends up happening is you turn into a, a bunch of one-on-one players that everybody catches it, can't find a teammate that's open. And what you end up watching instead of team ball and team movement is a bunch of guys that are just ducking their head and playing one-on-one and not running offense, not uh, – uh, playing team basketball and and it's hard particularly in at the collegiate level to have a you know five six seven eight guys that are great one-on-one players so that's really what they try to turn you into the uh the utep line we, both teams that we faced this weekend each had kind of an an elite guard that really liked to take it downhill tay hardy was the guy for utep and if that name sounds a little familiar well, he came from Southern Miss. Yep. So, uh, I guess out of their 13-man roster, what, I, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but how many – what do you think about 10 of their guys were transfers Quite in? a few new faces. Yeah. I mean, al- almost uh, top to bottom uh, were new faces for them. And, and Tay Hardy is, was a really good player at Southern Miss and uh, has, has gone to UTEP and is their leading scorer. And uh, our guys are very familiar with him. He's, he's a guy that uh, they grew up with uh, – in the Atlanta area, knew knew of him and know him, and uh, you know, still playing well. Yep, you were th- their post guys, Solomon and on Yima. Solomon, uh, you know, really did uh, scored 13 points, had six rebounds. You were able to kind of keep on Yima in check a little bit. We were able to keep him in check a little bit. Uh, Solomon is another guy that uh, you know I would be impressed if if uh, anyone remembers it, but he was at Stephen F. Austin last year. Oh. 
And yeah. so, uh, again, some familiarity. Although he wasn't at UTEP, we played against him last year at SFA uh, right before we went to Cancun. And so uh, a lot of experienced players out there. And, uh, you know, they, they're, they're a team that they're just not fun to play against. Uh, they they really get after you and, and uh, make it a a long game. You, as soon as you relax against them, they go on a run. You know you've got to take care of the ball. Uh, late game where we were up, uh, you know, 11, 12 points and just a couple quick turnovers versus that pressure. As soon as you mentally or physically relax, they're ready to to jump on it. And I thought we mentally relaxed just a little bit. All of a sudden, we had some turnovers in the backcourt. They quickly score it, and now it's a a three- or four-point ball game. For the Blue Raiders in that game, Tyler Millen, 15. DeAndre Dishman, 16. Justin Porter, 14. Eli Lawrence had 10, and Cam Weston had had 16 uh, coming off the bench. And and when you can get balance, it, it, it's going to take a balanced scoring night against them as good as they are defensively. Yeah, because if, if you don't do that, then you're asking somebody to score 25 or 30 points or, or, or two somebodies to have to score a ton of points to beat you because, again, that that's – uh, not what I'm sure Joe liked seeing on the stat sheet is yeah. seeing five guys in double figures and, and us with 84. Uh, that would typically tell you the other team was playing good team ball and popping it around. Their defensive style is kind of designed to do the opposite of that, is you know have guys having uh, uh, plenty of turnovers and, and uh, just one guy trying to do all the work. And – story on Joe Golding, uh, you may have caught it during the holidays that uh, he and his family were in Dallas, I guess, and were, and were driving back to El Paso. And this is, you remember the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, how cold it got and all the, the weather that was going on? Well, there were, in all the airline issues, there were, what, two or three, three pit football players who were trying to get to El Paso for their bowl game for the bowl game because they were playing Pitt was playing in the Sun Bowl and coach Golding and his family were in a van they, they or in a U-Haul apparently oh. I think it was a U-Haul might have been a, just a U-Haul van okay and then they they loaded up these three Pitt football players and drove them and they got them to the bowl game got them to the bowl game on time that's that that says a lot about what kind of guy he is yeah, too. yeah he's he's a good guy uh I like Joe I I've, I didn't know him uh, before he got hired at, at uh, UTEP, but uh, spending some time with him at the conference meetings and, and you know, having phone conversations, things like that. Uh, good guy and, uh, you know, fun to, to compete against. Yep. Raiders win it uh, by a score of 84-72 over UTEP and middle will play the Miners again uh, out on Glory Road uh, on the final game of the regular season coming up on March the 4th. We'll take a timeout, and we'll uh, talk about the UTSA matchup from this past Saturday night right here on Nick McDevitt Live from the Blue Raider Network and Learfield. Every week, our Blue Raiders go the extra mile to make sure they're at their very peak. At Sunbelt Bakery, they do the same thing to make sure their granola bars are at their peak. Every week, Sunbelt Bakery brings new batches of granola bars from their bakery to your neighborhood. That's why Sunbelt Bakery's granola bars taste like they just baked them. Because they did. Try a Sunbelt Bakery granola bar today and taste the difference. Sunbelt Bakery. Bakery fresh taste. No preservatives. MT Dining is eating made easy. With more than 19 dining locations, you'll never run out of variety on campus. Whether it's Chick-fil-A, Steak and Shake, or Starbucks, we've got the brands you love right here. Need a quick snack or Scantron? Stop by one of the six pods on campus. And try out MT Dining's new farm-to-fork experience. Farmer's Market, now open. Located in the Student Union. Visit mtdining.com for more information. Or visit our office in the Keithley University Center. Room 202. Blue Raider fans, with more local brews than ever before, you are sure to find a local favorite this season in the Blue Raider Beer Garden. Enjoy the thrill of the game at the Blue Raider Beer Garden and try our selection of brews from Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, or Life is Brewing. All available for your tasting pleasure in the Blue Raider Beer Garden above Section D in the Murphy Center. Thank you, Cedar Glade Brews, May Day Brewery, and Life is Brewing for your support of MTSU Athletics. 
Hey, Blue Raider fans, Chip Walters here. Lightning's Locker Room, powered by Textbook Brokers, is the place to get your Blue Raider gear. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 6 and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Lightning's Locker Room is just across the street from Floyd Stadium at 1321 Greenland Drive. It has all the MT polos, hoodies, T-shirts, hats, and all the other game day gear you'll ever need. See the selection online at mtsugear.com or at Gate 2A on game days. Lightning's Locker Room, the official game day provider, powered by Textbook Brokers. Is that the sound of an ooey, gooey, cheesy, crunchy slice of (laughs) P-I-Z-Z-A? Obviously. But as good as that sounds, we think it can get even better. Oh, yeah. That's the sound of a freshly opened, fizz-filled Pepsi. The only thing that can take this flavor medley of crunchy dough, mouth-watering cheese, and savory sauce to the next level. How about another bite? Pepsi and pizza sound like a match made in heaven and taste even better. Pizza. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Middle Tennessee Electric proudly supports the Blue Raiders. And we're proud to power the scoreboard lights at Murphy Center. When it comes to the electric service in the community, you can always trust MTE to do what's best for our members. We serve by providing affordable, reliable, safe electricity and outstanding member services. Here at MTE, we serve to make life better for our members and their communities. Visit MTE.com to learn more. And about that scoreboard, well, light it up, Blue Raiders. The Blue Raiders on News Radio WGNS, Murfreesboro, Smyrna. Welcome back into Nick McDevitt Live. Our show is brought to you in part by the Lee Company. Blue Raider fans get ahead of the game with the best home services team in town. For your heating, air conditioning, plumbing, electrical, and home improvement needs, Lee Company is the team to call 615 867 1000 or online at leecompany.com. Saturday night's matchup with UTSA was game number 24 on the season, which means we are moving right on through it. And uh, obviously that was probably a day a lot of your players were waiting to get uh, get a chance at UTSA again. But I have to say, UTSA started the game with a ton of energy, and, and, and that is a reflection of their head coach, Steve Henson. Oop. Hang on here. Try that. Let's try that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, uh, they're, they are still playing hard, and uh, it, it is a testament to uh, not just uh, Coach Henson, who I have a ton of respect for, but their team. I mean, they're, they're, they haven't uh, quit, and uh, it, they're not rolling over. The, a couple of nights before us, they were at Western Kentucky, and early they were up 10. Uh, halftime they were up one and ended up losing by seven. And, uh, you know, that's not a, uh, an easy place to go win. And uh, their, their game just a couple of weeks ago, they were at North Texas and uh, lost in the final really 15 to 20 seconds of the game. And uh, we all know how good North Texas is and has been. And so uh, they, they are you, – you've got to play well. You know, they, their, their record, uh, you know, kind of at this point of the season, everybody, your record, you know, it is what it is. You, you kind of are what the numbers say you are. Uh, but at the same time, you've, you've got to play well. And we did not do that when we played them the first time. Uh, they were 0-3 in the league. And uh, we, we looked like we were going to play an 0-3 team. And uh, they, they we, we were telling our players, like, they're, they're going to come out and, and you, you're playing a, a wounded animal here. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to come out you, and, and they know they're gonna co- they have to come out swinging. And they did. And uh, it took us too long to respond when we were down there. Yeah. Two guys on their ball club you have to be aware of is Jafe Mador, number one, the guard. And we were talking about everybody having a guard that can do something. And also Chad, uh, Chad Germany, who, or Jacob Germany, Jacob, yep. Jacob Germany, who is 6'11 and can really do a lot with the ball. In the first matchup uh, in San Antonio, Mador had 19 points and one rebound. He ended up with eight points and zero rebounds here. Germany had a double-double. He was 23, 23 points, 11 rebounds, two assists. And the Blue Raiders held him here to seven points and six rebounds. That was the name of the game. You know, uh, Madour is really fast in transition. And if you are either lazy, uh, getting back defensively, any of your defensive assignments are wrong, 
he, he just – he's a one-man fast break. And there are a couple guys in our league or in teams that we've played in the past that – uh, that's kind of the t terminology we give to that, that guy. He is a one-man fast break and uh, can turn what is a, a three-on-two or even a two-on-three break into a one-on-zero and goes by everybody. So uh, he got some of those uh, down at UTSA. I think, I think our team was uh, had a heightened sense of awareness of where he was and what he was doing. And then Germany, the 6'11 lefty, uh, was just – uh, the real big difference in the game down there. And yep. uh, here I thought between uh, Dishman and, and uh, uh, Coleman Jones, both those two guys did a really good job on him. Uh, there were several times he, he loves – he's a big left. He loves to get back to that right shoulder and score with his left hand. And, um, you know, he, he's – at times we were sitting on it, you know, sitting on his right shoulder, and he was still able to get there. But it just wasn't as comfortable as it was the first time. Uh, I just thought he was—he he looked like he was in a postman workout yeah. uh, when we played him uh, down in Texas a, a month ago. Uh, the other night, I thought we 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 made his uh, shots difficult. Two minutes to go in the first half. It's a one-point game. Ends up, you get a couple of buckets. End up having a six-point lead at halftime. Then you score the first seven of the second half and put it up to double digits pretty quickly, and that's kind of where it stayed and, and built on. What was the key to making that happen? Well, I think our guys just had a, a little more urgency to start the second half. I thought uh, Eli Lawrence's drive to start the second half, he drove from the right wing, got to about the middle of the paint, landed on two it's a strong, aggressive drive, and he kicks it to Justin Buford right in front of our bench in the corner. That was the first time I just thought there was a purposeful drive in a while. We were getting in the lane, but we just kind of looked like we were playing on a Sunday afternoon in the Murphy Center in the first half. In the second half, I thought we looked like we were driving with intent, with purpose to, to be a tough, strong finish or an easy kick out three. And I thought we played that, ray, that way the rest of the game. Justin Buford then started, uh, excuse me, Justin Porter had two real strong drives, one for a layup and one, another layup. I just we looked like we were trying to get in there and play tough and strong and physical at the bucket. I thought we were getting to the basket and then just kind of, you know, putter and petering out at the end in, in the first half and, and really weren't taking advantage of, of getting in the lane. And uh, I just thought we did a better job there in the second half. Yeah, you had three guys with 13 that day. I didn't – and uh, and then we had a full moon yesterday. So you had all <laughs> kinds of stuff happening. But, but Justin Porter, uh, T. Leonard, and uh, Cam Weston all with 13. And it was really a nice – getting back in the groove game for T because he ended up scoreless against UTEP but kind of got things going again. You could tell he felt better. Yeah, he, he started moving around a little bit better later in the week. Uh, I thought he was probably about 80 to 90 percent on Thursday. Uh, looked a little more like himself on Friday and then Saturday was able to p perform pretty well. Uh, we were off yesterday, today, uh, kept it to about an hour at practice. Uh, the last two Mondays we've actually been off, uh, gave our guys two days in a row off. Uh, one of those travel was due to travel. It was a tough Sunday on, on that. Uh, but sometimes when you, you're, you're afforded to give two days in a row off, you've got some guys with some hurt knees and some tendonitis that, that two days in a row uh, makes them feel a lot better than, than taking mm -hmm. a day here, practicing a couple of days, and then uh, having a second day off later is, is a lot different for particularly guys like Dish. Yeah. You know, he, he's – over the last two years, they did just – it's I can tell a big difference when there's two in a row. And we chose not to go that route and go completely off uh, today, but uh, tried to, to – Keep it short, you yeah, said. Yeah, just uh, pull back a little. Yep, Raiders scored 35 in the first half and 49 in the second half against UTSA and uh, split the series uh, with, with the Roadrunners. So. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, we've said it a bunch. You've got you to win home games because right. the road games, it's, it's, it's hard to win. I was talking to Coach Stock earlier today in the hallway, and he said, man, people just don't realize how hard it is to win at this level. Like, it, it's, it's hard. You know, winning college games is difficult no matter the sport. And he said, I don't care whether you're at home, on the road, or on the moon. You know, winning, winning is hard. And, uh, you know, when, when you're going on the road and you can steal some, that, that's a good feeling in, in order to stay at the top of your league. 
uh, you got to win them when you're at home. Yeah, we, we started this segment talking about, about Steve Henson. Who, who uh, out here remembers watching him play when he was at Kansas State? He had a guy named Mitch, Mitch Richmond, Richmond who could light it up. And they were – that Kansas State team, uh, obviously their big rival in the Big 12 was Kansas right down the road. That was the Danny Manning era at Kansas. Kevin Pritchard, those guys. And one of the assistant coaches – for Kansas State was our, our pal Greg Grinsing. That's and, right. And uh, Greg was uh, on that staff uh, of Lon Kruger's. And, and now, if uh, I it, remember, you know, was Chris Adams, our women's tenant, our women's golf coach, uh, was at K State yep. during those days, and uh, was a big uh, Steve Henson fan. Oh man, that, it, I, I didn't, I didn't know all those stories. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was. Uh, at Cooper's age. That's right. And, and Chris was <laughs> telling me uh, that he was actually also a, a, a big-time track star because of his athleticism yeah. that they, they actually had him running track. And well, she said he, he has some records at K-State uh, as a track and field athlete as well. Yeah, well, they ended up playing Kansas four times that year. They uh, played them twice in the regular season, once in the conference tournament, and then – ended up in the region finals uh, up at the Silver Dome, uh, had to play them there, and, and Kansas just that day happened to get the win, and there they were on the road then to, to winning the whole thing. So, but Steve Henson, if you, when, next time you see him, he was one heck of a player at a high, high level, a high in, level. in college basketball. All right, uh, we'll continue on. We've got some questions we're going to talk to Coach McDevitt about and uh, have more with Nick McDevitt live right here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hi, we're RJ Young. We offer technology solutions that power your business, school, hospital, church, law firm, and more. RJ Young will empower your office to be the modern office. That means an office that integrates technology as a business advantage, all to help you work smarter. From managed IT services, office equipment, and technology, business process outsourcing, and digital communications, we're proud to be your one stop for technology solutions that power your business. Come visit us at rjyoung.com. Hi, this is Coach Nick McDevitt. Ascend Federal Credit Union is the proud sponsor and exclusive credit union of Blue Raider Athletics. Visit Ascend's branch just off campus at 2316 East Main Street or any of their three other Murfreesboro locations. You can also keep track of your accounts and deposit checks on the go with Ascend's mobile app. For a complete list of services, ATMs, and locations, visit Ascend.org. Ascend is federally insured by the NCUA. Hey, Blue Raider fans. This is Dr. Mark Hardison with Middle Tennessee Oral and Implant Surgery. We are so proud to be able to serve the Blue Raider teams and their families when they need wisdom teeth removed, dental implants, or other specialty oral care. Our mission is to provide health care as it should be, providing compassion, availability, and excellence to every one of our patients. We deeply appreciate the support of your business as we join in supporting our team. Let's go Blue! Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance takes great pride in treating Middle Tennessee State University athletes, experts in bones, joints, and muscles, and with more than 60 specialists in locations across Middle Tennessee, TOA has a playbook to get you back in the game. To request an appointment, visit us at toa.com or give us a call at 855-NEED-TOA. Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance, or TOA, the official team doctors for Blue Raider Athletics. Hey basketball fans, this is Coach McDevitt, and I want to talk some trash. No, not about the game. I want to talk about the litter problem on our roadways. Did you know that the Tennessee Department of Transportation spends over $23 million every year just to pick up litter? There's over 100 million pieces of litter on our roadways at any given time, making our state unsightly and unsafe. Litter harms our highways, waterways, even our wildlife. So let's do something about it. Don't litter, remind others not to, and report littering when you see it. We can beat litter, but only if we're all on the same team. Join the movement today. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown is proud to be a longtime supporter of MTSU Athletics and your locally owned HVAC and plumbing company. For 82 years, Roscoe Brown has been the trusted name in heating, cooling, and plumbing for Middle Tennessee homeowners and businesses. Call 1-888-MY-ROSCOE to schedule your HVAC or plumbing service today. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Roscoe Brown. People you know, a name you trust. Go Blue Raiders. Roscoe Brown. RoscoeBrown.com. 
The Blue Raiders play here. News Radio WGNS. Welcome back into the Boulevard tonight for Nick McDevitt Live. A couple of uh, highlights uh, off the stat sheet uh, recently and uh, for the season. Uh, the Blue Raiders have combined to score 95 points in the second half of their last two games. That uh, The team has shot 67% from the floor and 56% from three uh, after halftime during that span while holding opponents to a 3-13 to assist to turnover ratio. We need to give that halftime speech before the game starts. Exactly. Kyle <laughs> asked you, why, it, would you record that and just kind of play it back and maybe play it twice? Play, play it twice. Yeah, play it twice. Once before the game, once at halftime. I mean, those are – those are unbelievable numbers, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, you know, and, and really that it, it helps, you know, to be able to, to finish game strong, start halves well. Uh, the, kind of that last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half, uh, those middle eight minutes are, are important. You don't want to work real hard for the first 15 or 16 minutes and then, uh, you know, just – go into the half even and then vice versa, you know, then come out of the locker room the same thing. Now all of a sudden there's 15 or 16 to go and you can look up at the, the scoreboard and you've played pretty good and you're down four or five because you just didn't finish the half the way you're supposed to or start the second half. So, uh, you know, the, to be able to, to do that and then continue it for that whole 20 minutes there in the second half is uh, going to be big for us, particularly on the road. Some individual numbers. Cam Weston has shot 58% from the floor in the last four games. T. Leonard is 31st in the country in block shots. He is fifth all-time in career blocks at middle with 103. DeAndre Dishman, of course, just one of seven. Seventh-year players in all of college basketball. And uh, Tyler Millen uh, set a new career high with his 15-point effort against UTEP last week. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was really big for us. I thought Tyler's energy during the game not just the fact that he scored 15 but how he scored his 15 it, it wasn't shot hunting or point hunting uh he was out there uh, a man on a mission uh, particularly rebounding the ball he didn't come up with all of them uh but i thought particularly on the offensive glass he just kept some balls alive and all of a sudden somebody else got it and put it in but his activity level was was uh higher than it's been, and, and we needed to stay there uh, as, as we go down the stretch here because I thought he was a, a really good spark for our team to start that game the other night. Speaking of hotter than a depot stove, Justin Porter, uh, <laughs> since being inserted into the starting lineup, 10 of 13 from the field, 77%. Hotter than what? A depot stove. De okay. And, uh, and uh, he is uh, five of seven from three during those two games. So he, he is uh, he's he's taken on that role well. He has hotter than a firecracker. That's that's, right. that's what I was always told. But he is shooting it well. Uh, he is. I, I think I saw his nine for fifteen from three uh, in the last six or seven games. Like eighteen for thirty-two. I think it is in that same stretch. Uh, his his turnovers have really gone down. I think he has ten in our last eight games. Uh, it's a couple games with zero. And anytime you got a guy that uh, can touch the paint like he can with his speed, can make some threes like he's been doing. He was a 40% three-point shooter last year in junior college. And over the last, really, month for us, you can see how and why. And, and then to, to have a guy that can handle it like that, do those things and, and not turn it over. You know, when, when you've got that kind of combination for him to be able to do what he's doing and not turn it over and for Cam to stay – have fresh legs at the end of the game and make some of those tough twos he does around the basket uh, is, is giving us a, a good one-two punch out there. Well, our boy Bob has given his seal of approval to uh, Justin Porter's game recently. I appreciate that. Uh, Larry wants to know what, uh, how did uh, T end up getting a T? Uh, he, on his block shot, um, let the gentleman that he blocked his shot know that he blocked it. And uh, the official said that he said something he shouldn't have. And um, that's why I gave him a T. Yep. And so, yeah, so they're, they're pretty, pretty easy on that one. Uh, Larry also said wanted to commend uh, those young men with equipment keeping the floor dry. I think it looks bad when we're on TV and the officials have to get a towel and dry it up themselves. But they've I, been on it. They have. I, I <laughs> echo that, you know, to, to have people that are – Doing what they're supposed to be doing, the, the, it makes the, the game go a lot smoother. 
this past weekend was Legends Weekend, and a lot of uh, folks came back. Uh, run through the list uh, pretty quick. Tori Moore, class of 97. Bobby Clark, uh, class of 95, was here. Ty Bainham, or should I say Ty Bainham, he was here. Uh, and he comes, to, he comes to games all the time and has a, has a young uh, son who's doing well. Kent Ayer uh, was here. Derry Cochran, who was uh, part of the 1971 team. Ray Davis, class of 93. Uh, Bob Gardner, he comes to a lot of games too, I think. Uh, class of 1967. Uh, Velvis Goodlow from class of 96. Uh, Big Kerry, Kerry Hammonds was here, class of 87. Chris Harris, who was one of the, uh, well, Kerry was on the, one of the teams that beat, uh, beat uh, Florida State in the NCAA, beat Tennessee and Georgia in the NIT. Chris Harris was one of the cat killers in 1982 uh, to beat Kentucky. Steve Hendricks was here. Randy Henry, class of 1989. And Randy has seen you play twice this year, and he is 2-0. and I, and I told Randy that, too. Yeah. I said, you, you've seen us play twice. We've won twice. Uh, we're going to have to up your attendance. He came to our uh, game at Houston when we played Rice and was here the other night. And as you and I talked about, to, to have him and uh, Kerry Hammond Sr. is a, a, a low-post duo. That's, that was two large people. Uh, Randy looks like he could still play some, too. That, he's, he's a big boy. Yep, and that doesn't even include Bam Bam Rainey, who was Kerry's – uh, counterpart down there. Uh, Matt Joins came back, Gerald King, uh, Jimmy Stick Martin, uh, Jaquan Raymond. Jaquan uh, doesn't miss. I love no, that guy. He is every Man, game. He is I, here every I, I game. Would, I, I would have loved. I, actually, we coached against him when I was That's at true, Asheville. You did in uh, Alaska. When we played uh, middle and uh, up at the Alaskan tournament. But Man, Jaquan Raymond, they, they, they don't make them any better. I, I don't know what it's like to coach him day to day, but he, he does not miss a home basketball game. He comes to practice, and he'll just stroll up the tunnel and sit down over there on the bench uh, about halfway through practice. And, uh, you he know, just loves it. He loves it and loves middle. Yep. Donovan Sims was back, and Donovan's been back to a bunch of games this year. Larry Stewart, the irrepressible Larry Stewart, was there, one of the all-time great he heroes. He could score it. I heard a stat about Larry Stewart today at lunch and uh, that was uh, that Larry <laughs> – Went, of course, Larry played. There was no three-point line, but and he scored a ton of points anyway. But somebody said Larry has a, a very distinct honor. He played four years here and never had an assist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that's true or well, not. Well, it's, it's hard to be way up that assist list and be way up on that point list, too. And he's, uh, he's at the top of that one. Yep. Sleepy Taylor, of course. Uh, Tim Wagner uh, played back in the, in the 60s. Kevin Wallace. Uh, of course, Boogie Yates was back, all-time leading scorer. Kyle Young from down in Marshall County. Stan Summerall. Frank Davis from the class of 1959 was back. Richard Duncan. And uh, so that was just a, a, a really good group and glad to have those legends back this weekend. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, obviously you want to play well when those guys are back. You know, it's great having uh, the, the usuals. You, you, you love having the Ken Ayers and the Jaquan Raymonds and Domin Sims and Boogie Yates. They're, they're always around. But uh, when, when the guys that have kind of moved on and, and they're, they're, they live far away don't often get a chance to come back when they are here, you want to play well and win because the, there, there's a lot of wins uh, they listed brag, right there. They want to brag, too, when they go back absolutely, home. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's uh, really good that we were able to perform well on Saturday. All right, uh, need to take a break. More with Coach Nick McDevitt after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Hey, Blue Raiders fans, the Mint Gaming Hall Kentucky Downs is a proud partner of your Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. For good times and big wins, the Raiders and the Mint Gaming Hall deliver both. Located close by in Franklin, Kentucky, the Mint Gaming Hall is your spot for great food, cold drinks, and big jackpots. Ready for dinner? The all-new Iron Steakhouse awaits you. Come hungry and be prepared to be impressed. Check out the mintgaming.com for all the details. Get your big hit today. 
Hey basketball fans, this is Coach McDevitt. It's never lost on Window World that your home is your largest fiscal investment. Window World's integrity will be noticed from your very first moment of contact. The clean, professional installation of premium windows, siding, doors, and more are designed to last while leaving your home looking amazing. Window World and their lifetime warranty will always be there when it really matters. They're America's most trusted remodeler and a proud partner of MTSU Athletics because the difference is integrity and always in the details. Las Casas Drugs is a proud sponsor of Blue Raider Athletics, located at 4702 Las Casas Pike, just minutes from Murfreesboro. Las Casas Drugs strives to provide all of your pharmaceutical needs in that hometown atmosphere you deserve. Family-owned and operated, Las Casas Drugs offers free delivery, immunizations, drive through window, gift shop, merchandise, and medication management programs. Come by and see how we can make a difference. And go Blue Raiders! You buy something because you found it at a low price, and soon you realize it's no bargain because you really needed something better. It happens all the time, especially with car insurance. But the good news is you can get the right coverage at the right price. Just talk to me, State Farm Agent Bud Morris. I'll help you get the right coverage at a price that's right for you. Call me at 893-1417 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm Bud Morris, providing insurance and financial services. Whether you go online or go in person, City Auto in Murfreesboro is where you go to see a gazillion cars and choose the one that's right for you. And there's no better time to go than now because we have a bigger, brand new facility. It's the easy, comfortable, convenient way to find what you're looking for. Remember, cityauto.com is where you go to find your car online. And the all-new City Auto campus in Murfreesboro is where you go to see it in person. Go now, and we'll see you there. At Kroger, you can find the highest quality products at a great price in every aisle, every day with Kroger brand. So you can stock up on your household favorites that are tried, tested, and loved by you. Because when you get the products you love at great prices, it feels like winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Simply the best. News Radio WGNS, the flagship station for Blue Raider Sports. Welcome back into Nick McDevitt Live. Of course, next week will be February 13th, the night before Valentine's Day, and we're hatching plans for something special next week. Hope you'll be here for that. But something special this week would be five random questions for the coach. It is time once again this week. Uh, Super Bowl coming up this weekend. Blue Raiders have a player on each side. You've got Darius Harris and you've got Reed Blankenship. Uh, but, of course, halftime is always something people take uh, a lot of time and talk about. Do you have a favorite Super Bowl halftime show? Uh, Michael Jackson's performance was uh, pretty awesome. Um, but kind of one of the, the epic moments that you can remember is when – Prince at the end of his. I thought you were going to say Janet Jackson, but well, but that's, <laughs> you're you're going to have to. You got that one. But uh, you're right. Prince was terrific. Well, and then when he started singing uh, "November Rain" or "Purple, or, or Rain. Purple Rain," excuse me, uh, it started raining started a little raining. bit, and so that was that was one to of me, those like, yeah, man, that's this pretty awesome. Yeah, he's my favorite. Uh, I've gotten some new material here from the National Day of Whatever calendar. Today is National Chopsticks Day. Can you eat with chopsticks? Nope. <laughs> I can eat the food really well. Uh, but it's it's a fork, a knife and a fork for me. Me, uh, I'm, I'm right there with you. And uh, little General Sal's chicken, please bring that on. Bring it on with a fork. Yep. Uh, if you could trade places with anyone for a week, who would it be? Ooh. Chase Elliott. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Yep. So right. what, what did you think about the racing in the Coliseum last night? Oh, I love it. Do you? Yes. I, I, I texted you. They could you. race in a barn or down <laughs> uh, the street. It doesn't matter. I, I'm going to watch it. The road course races, the super speedways, uh, Bristol in the dirt, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Okay. I, I'm not a fan I, of the dirt at Bristol. I, but anyway. That's, I'm just a NASCAR nut. All right. Do you ever read – do you read your horoscope ever? Nope. 
Never? No. What, what, I know sign, I'm a, what sign are I'm you? I'm a Taurus. Okay. But I mess I, with I, the bull, I, and you, sometimes you get the get horns, the, right? Yeah, I, I guess. So, <laughs> uh, anybody famous in your family tree? Mm. I would say your dad is semi-famous. Uh, probably in the state of North Carolina, they For would know sure. where he is. For sure. But anybody else, like nobody, anybody jump off the boat at Plymouth Rock or anything? If they did, I don't know about it. <laughs> okay. I don't know. All right. Well, there it is. Pretty easy Man, this week. that was week. easy. All right. Five random questions this week for the coach. We'll take a break. Take a look ahead at this week coming up. Trips to Western and UAB right after this on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Murfreesboro Medical Clinic is proud to be the official medical group of MTSU Athletics. We all win big when we work as a team for better health. Just like MTSU's athletes and coaches, our healthcare professionals work tirelessly to make our community proud. At MMC, we really are true blue. MTSU is our hometown team, and your health is our mission. Visit mmclinic.com or call us at 615-893-4480. It's just a few cocktails at happy hour. There aren't any cops around. After every game, we always have a few. It's no big deal. It was just a few drinks. I'm good. Hey, I can hold my liquor. I drink and drive all the time. If you put away some drinks, put away your keys. Fans don't let fans drive drunk. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. At Tri Green Equipment, they know the value of teamwork. They have the tractor packages with implements you need. Get started online at trigreenequipment.com and score a new John Deere tractor package at a comfortable, low monthly payment price. Tri Green Equipment is a tried and true partner of MTSU Athletics. Go Blue! Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. You are listening to NTSU Sports on WGNS. Raiders will be traveling north, tied with UAB for third place in Conference USA. Uh, Western Kentucky is 5-8 and eight in the league. UAB 8-5, and five, just like middle, and those are the two opponents this week. The Blue Raiders have won three straight against Western Kentucky. They're starting to play a little bit, get, and they're coming, uh, getting better. And going to Bowling Green, it will be a whiteout on Thursday night. So uh, it, it, they'll, be, they'll be ready for the Raiders, and the Raiders will be ready for them. Always are, both ways. It, it really doesn't matter uh, in a lot of rivalry games what the records are when those two teams get together. Uh, it's going to be rough and physical and, and uh, high intense, and uh, this rivalry uh, is no different. Uh, our guys will be ready. I'm sure uh, the guys in red up the road will be ready as well, and it'll be a fun one. Good are, both, are you, are you going to wear blue and they're going to wear red again, or are they going to wear their home their Sometimes home whites? they don't seem to have gotten the memo on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, I, you know, I think last year they came out in, in red. Yeah. And then uh, the g the game started, and they came out and they were in their white unis. So, okay. um, you know, we'll they, see. They can wear red or you're white. Wearing, you're wearing blue. We're, we're wearing blue. That's I what know matters. That. And uh, Saturday, UAB, uh, Andy Kennedy's team is is gotten back rolling again, and Jelly Walker is back healthy. Yes, he is. Uh, you know, they had a big win over FAU. Uh, uh, they lost at FIU. Uh, they had the similar trip that we did to Florida. Uh, lost both uh, at FAU and FIU, and then. Uh, got them back for the homestand uh, both of those games over the weekend so that's two good wins and uh, they are playing well we'll, well that's another tough place to win and a, a really deep talented uh, well coached team we got to go play good and that'll be a Saturday afternoon there in Birmingham you know coaches this time of year they talk about getting their team right do you feel your team getting to that point yeah you just uh, this time of year you just want to start uh, you know stay on an upward trajectory make sure that you're healthy both physically and mentally that you're, you're not just uh, playing tired, lethargic uh, basketball. And uh, that, that'll be important for us. And, uh, it, I, you know, 
we're heading down the home stretch. That's and right. And so we, we've got to, to, to stay healthy. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us tonight uh, for Coach Nick McDevitt. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Connor Haynes has been our studio producer. We'll have basketball coming up on Thursday night right here on the Blue Raider Network from Learfield. Good night.